Okay, we're on pages 142, 143. Okay, we're going to do 142. Clearly, we're going to do it first. Um, okay, so... This is the vertex form of the quadratic. So far, we've looked at standard form, right? Which is ax squared plus bx plus c. Everybody's okay with that? All right, the vertex form, it's the same equation. It's just written in different form. You think about like linears. We have different ways to write a linear equation, right? Standard form, y equals mx b, and point slope form. Okay, so we looked at those rearranging the equations. Today, we're not rearranging. We're just looking at the vertex form. So it would be y equals a x minus h squared plus k. This is on your mathematics chart, okay? So we write it in different forms because different forms give us give us give us different information. Okay? Now to for the vertex, because we looked a lot at vertexes yesterday. The vertex you can read it directly from here. So you remember in standard form, you have to do negative b over 2a to find the x, and then you have to plug in to get the y value, right? When you have an equation in vertex form, it's called the vertex form because the vertex comes directly out of the equation. You have to do no work. Does that make sense? So the vertex is h, k, whatever numbers are there. Now, there are a little bit of, there's a little bit to this. If you think about taking what's inside of a parenthesis, anytime you have something inside of a parenthesis, you're generally going to set it equal to zero. Okay? So I say there's no work. There's really not. I'm going to show you how the work does, but then you can get it from seeing it. Okay? If I wanted X by itself, how would I move H? It's subtraction. Oh, uh, I would add it to both sides, right? So this side would cancel, and I get x is equal to h. Everybody okay with that? Okay, so that's where this h comes from. So basically, what happens here is this number that's in here, whatever that number is, you're going to take the opposite sign because it changes when I set it equal to zero. Does that make sense? Yes or no? Okay. So the, so the K value is already back here at the back. It stays the same. Okay. So your K, if it's positive, it's still positive. Is everybody okay with that? But this one, if this number is negative, then your H is actually a positive. If this number, if this is a plus h in here, then you're going to end up with a negative number for your x value of your vertex. Everybody okay with that? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Okay. So this is your vertex is your x is equal to h once you've solved it. Now, the first time I do this with you, I'm going to solve it. After that, we're you really don't need to because we're really just taking the opposite sign of whatever that number is inside the parentheses. Everybody okay with that? Does that make sense? Okay. So x is equal to h is that axis of symmetry. We did that yesterday, right? Once you have, once you know what the x value of the vertex is, you know the equation of the axis of symmetry, right? Okay. So I'm gonna look at this first problem right here. To find my x value, I'm gonna do x plus four equals zero. Everybody okay with why I did that? Okay. So then to get x, what do I do? I would subtract 4, right? Yes? So when I subtract 4 on both sides, that one cancels and I get x is equal to negative 4. So the, the, the equation of my axis of symmetry is x equals negative 4. Now, if you didn't know that, could you not graph it and find the vertex in your graph? Okay. And I don't care if you graph it. All right, it doesn't matter to me. All right, but sometimes doing a graph takes more time than if you just know this piece of information. Is everybody okay with that? Okay, so my vertex is, this is the X value of my vertex. This minus two back here is the Y value of my vertex. So the vertex of that equation is negative four and negative two. 
What's in the parentheses? It's the opposite sign. What's at the back? The sign stays. Is everybody okay with that? Yes or no? Okay. So if I look at this equation right here, inside the parentheses, I have minus 3, right? Which is actually going to become a what? Positive 3. Positive 3. So my axis of symmetry is going to be x equals 3. My vertex, the x value, is the same number, right? 3. All right, now, I get my y value by this plus or minus whatever at the back, right? If there's nothing there, then it must be what? Zero. zero. So your vertex is at three and zero. Could you graph it and check? Yes. Yes, Absolutely you could. Is everybody okay with that? All right, so this one, the x value of my vertex is going to be what? Five. Five. The y value is going to be what? Negative four. Negative four. Is everybody okay how Carla got that? And if my x value of my vertex is 5, then the axis of symmetry must be five. x equals 5. Everybody okay with how this works? Y'all like the vertex form? Mm -hmm. Me too. Okay, now there are, there are different advantages to the different forms. It just depends on what piece of information you need. Everybody okay with that? Yes. All right, this one. There's no parentheses here. <coughs> There's no parentheses here because there is no b value. This is somewhat in standard form. But it's standard form without a B. Y'all do see that, right? Okay, so when you have no B in your equation, okay, y'all know what I'm talking about when I say no B, right? No BX in the equation, then the x value of the vertex equals zero. Because remember, to find the vertex from standard form, we do negative b over 2a, right? And if there's no b, then you have zero divided by 2a, and zero divided by anything is still zero, right? So if you see an equation like that and there's no b value, you know that the x value of the vertex is zero. Everybody okay with that? What is the y value of my vertex here? Positive 3. My axis of symmetry is x equals 0. Everybody okay with that? When, you're in the, when, you're, when you don't have a b value, this c and the k are, c and k are essentially the same thing. Everybody okay with that? Yes or no? Okay. c and k are the same thing. I want you to kind of understand that because it depends on the type, the way we're writing the equation depends on whether it's a C or it's a K, but they're really the same thing. Everybody good there? Okay. These you can graph in your calculator, but I can, I'm going to give you the information and we're going to sketch them quick because I want to save some time so I can start working. Okay. Because this part isn't super difficult. All right. Your vertex is where? Negative 2, and what y value, Jacob? 7. Everybody okay with that? Which means your axis of symmetry is x equals negative 2. Which direction does this graph open? Why? Because it's negative. There's a negative out front. That doesn't change. Everybody okay with that? So my vertex is at negative 2 and positive 7, which is right up here. And I know it's going to go down. Okay, if you graph it in your calculator, that's what it's going to do. Everybody okay with that? So my vertex is at negative 2 and 7. I'm going to go ahead and give you the other points because I've already graphed this. Okay? What you, I, I'm confident y'all can put stuff in a calculator and graph it. You do have to type it in the calculator exactly the way you see it. Okay? You have to put the negative, then you have to put x plus 2 inside of a parentheses. Put the square on the outside and then do plus seven at the back. You have to graph it exactly the way you see it. Is everybody okay with that? Yeah. Okay. So I had negative three and six, which is here, and then this point right here, because it's negative one and six, and then I had zero and three and negative four and three. So it does this right here. And it's gonna go down. There's probably some other points down there, but I'm not super worried about that right now. Y'all can get that out of a calculator. Everybody good? You don't need me how to push things in a calculator and hit the graph button. Surely y'all know how to graph and find the table at this point, yes? Okay. How do I write the domain of this, Sebastian? All right. What about the range? Greater than or 
Less yeah. than. Less than or equal to seven. Why is it less than or equal to? What's the reason why? Right. It can't go. But if, if it's reflected, your y is less than or equal to the y value of your vertex. Everybody remembers that from yesterday? Okay. If it's opening up, then it's greater than. But if it's opening down, it's less than or equal to. Everybody's good with that? Okay. This one. What is my x value of my vertex? Positive what, Carla? One, what is the y value of my vertex? Why is it zero? Yeah, there's nothing back there, so it's zero. Everybody okay with that? The equation of the axis of symmetry. X equals one. All right, so here's my vertex, one and zero. I'll give you the other points, two and three, three and 12, which will be off the graph. Zero and three, negative one and 12, which will also be off the graph. So for my vertex, I go to the right one, so I'm right here. Everybody okay with that? One and zero, then I had two and three, and zero and three, and then I had negative one and 12, which is way up there. So this graph does something like that. Everybody okay? Yes, no. Okay. What is the domain of this graph? All real numbers. Sebastian, range. Opening up greater than, greater than uh, everybody okay with that one? Anybody have a question about that? Y'all have your points <coughs> written. Do you have this written down? Okay. All right. This is the part. That part really is is pretty simple. Like you can get you can graph it and get that information. But if you just remember how to read the vertex, you can do that. So if you're not sure, graph it and get that information. Everybody okay with that? Yes. All right, so now we're going to talk about a transformation. All right, a transformation is just a change in a graph. All right, so the most simplistic quadratic equation is y equals x squared, or you can write that as f of x. They mean the same thing. Everybody's okay that f of x and y mean the same thing, right? Mm -hmm. The simplest function is called the parent function. I have said that term to y'all over and over and over this year. Okay? That is the parent function of a quadratic. Everybody good? All right, transformation is simply a change to the size or position of a figure. Because remember in eighth grade, we did transformations of like triangles and rectangles and stuff. Y'all remember that? We've already done transformations of lines and exponential equations. They either get skinnier or fatter. They move to the left, they move to the right, they move up, they move down. Everybody okay with that? They reflect. All those things are transformations. Everybody good? Okay. All right. So the first transformation we're going to look at is, now remember, your parent function is x squared. Okay? It has a vertex at 0, 0. Then it has a point at 1 and 1. Then it has a point at 2 and 4. And it has a point at 3 and 9. And on the left side, it's negative 1 and 1, negative 2 and 4, negative 3 and 9. Everybody's okay with that, right? That that's what it looks like. They have the parent function graphed right here. Okay? Yes? Okay. So here's what we're going to do. Um, Sebastian and uh, Carla, I need y'all to graph number 7 in your calculator. Right here. Exactly what you see. Okay? Jacob and Zoe, graph number eight in your calculator right here. Taylor and uh, Kaylee, y'all graph number nine. And Jake, I want you to graph number 10. So y'all mean just graph that in your calculator. Everybody knows what number they have? Okay, and then go to your table for me. Uh, Carla, y'all have seven, right? All right, what do you have as your vertex there? Your vertex of this? Did you graph it? Go look at that graph. Where's the bottom of that graph? What does 
does this say the vertex should be? Not two, negative two and zero. We just talked about the vertex over and over and over. Does yours, is yours at negative two and zero? Okay, give me some other points, Sebastian. Negative three, negative four, and negative one and zero. Give me the points that go with that. Negative four is at four. Negative three is at one. one. Negative one is at better be at one and zero is at four. four. Everybody okay with that? All right, so we're going to put the, those of you that grabbed the other ones, y'all keep your stuff up, okay? And we'll, we'll deal with it. All right, so we've got negative two and zero right here. Yes? I've got negative three and one right here. Negative one and one here. Zero and one, two, three, four right here. And negative four and positive four right up here. Those are the points. I'm going to sketch my graph in. Now, the graph that's already on there is the graph of the parent function that I wrote down over here. I just wrote the positive side down with the negative sides, negative one and one, negative two and four, and negative three and nine. Is everybody okay? This is your parent function. This is your new graph. This graph has made a transformation. Look at the picture that's on there, the parent function, and the new one we graphed. What happened? It moved which direction? To the left, right? So it went to the left. How far? Two. Two. Did it do anything else? Yes or no? Okay. So if it moved to the left two, then we're going to say left and right. Is that horizontal or vertical? Um, horizontal. Horizontal. So it's a horizontal translation left two. It didn't do anything else. Does everybody agree with that? Yes. That's all it did. It just moved over two units. Why? Because this says take x, your original x at zero, and take two away, right? Because if I set that equal to zero, it's going to be negative two. Does that make sense to y'all? That that's what the graph does. Moves over to the left, yes? Okay. This one right here, who had eight? Okay, Jacob, you had eight. Where's your vertex there? Zero and five. Zero and five. So you had one and what? Negative one and six. Okay. Negative two and nine. Negative two and nine. And then so one and six, six and two and nine. Two and nine. Is everybody okay with that? So I'm going to put those points on there. Zero and five. One, two, three, four, five. And then negative one and six is right here. And positive one and six is right here. The other points too high if I can't get it. So there's my graph. Okay? Look at your parent function. Look at the new one that we graphed. What happened? It went up how far? It went up five. Does everybody agree? So if left and right is horizontal, then moving up is a vertical. Vertical. Okay, so we call this a vertical translation up five. That's all that happened. And if you look at the equation, X wasn't affected at all, right? The only thing is this plus five at the back that caused it to move up. Is everybody okay with that? Does that make sense to y'all? Yes? Okay, let's look at this one. Who had nine? Kaylee and Taylor? All right, what is your vertex here? Negative one and negative six. Oops. I don't know. Negative one and negative six, okay? And so did you do, okay, you have zero and positive one and then negative two, negative three? Okay. So at negative two, it's at? Negative five. Negative five and at negative three, it's at? Negative two. Okay, so zero must be at negative five and one must also be at negative two, yes? Yes. All right. So if I go put these points on here, I have negative one and negative six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then I have negative two and negative five, zero and negative five. And then I have negative three and negative two. And then one and negative two. So it's right here. And then I can, is there anything at negative four? I'm just curious. Is there a point 
negative four and three. Negative four and three. So that would make this one right here at three also, right there. Okay. So here's this graph right here. All right. How did this graph change from the parent function? Down. It went down and what else? It went one to the left and it moved down how many? Six. What tells you that it went one to the left and down six besides the picture? Went left one and down six, right? Your vertex moved to the left one and down six. And if the vertex moves, the whole graph moves, right? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write this shorthand, okay? It made a horizontal translation. Are you all okay with HT, horizontal translation? And it went to the left. You can write the word left or you can draw an arrow to the left. By one, yes? It also made a VT, which stands for what you think? Vertical translation, which direction? Down, so you can draw an arrow or you can write the word down. And it went down how far? Six, Six which is exactly what this equation shows right here. Do y'all see that? My vertex moves, and if my vertex moves, everything moves. Does that make sense? I don't just get to move the vertex, I gotta move the whole graph. Are we good? Yes? yes okay, this one, who had it, Jake? Uh, four and one. Four and one. Three and zero. Three and zero. Two and negative three. Two and negative three, and then after four, did you do five and six, yes? So five is at zero and six is at negative three, right? Yes, okay, so let me put these points on here. So I have three and zero. Here it is right here. Then I have four and one. Oh, four and one was my vertex. I'm sorry. My fault. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Four and one right here. Three and zero is here. And then I have five and zero right here. Sorry, y'all. Then I have two and negative three, and I have six and negative three. Is seven on there at all, Jake, or is it too far down? It's negative eight. Okay, so it would be here and here. Okay, so this is basically what the graph does. Everybody okay with that? So what happened? It reflected. It reflected. How did we know it was going to do that anyway? Yeah, the negative out front. Causes x-axis reflection. We talked about that yesterday, right? Why do we call it x-axis? Because that's this line right here, right? It reflected across there, yes? Okay, so the first thing that happened that we saw was this x-axis reflect, and that's how you can write it. You can write it x-axis reflect. Like, I don't need you to write big, long things. I just need you to know what's happening. What else happened? All right, we always do X first. So it went left or right, yes or no? Okay, how do I write left and right translations? Yep, HT, and which direction did it go? To the right or to the left? It went to the right, how far? Four units. All right, what else did it do? Here's the original. Where's your vertex? Okay, my vertex went up one, so I write that as a what? VT up one. Is everybody okay with that? Sometimes it helps to have your X squared graph. Like if you go to Y1 and you just graph X squared, it'll give you this graph right here. Then you can graph your equation and look at how it's different. Does that make sense? You can read it directly from there. I know how to read the equation and know what happens. If you struggle with that, could you not graph it and see how... All you really need to look at is, for the most part, is your vertex. How did my vertex move? If it's negative, you have to write that reflection. Is everybody okay? All right, let's look at your other paper. All right, we're going to split it like this. Girls are going to graph 11. Boys are going to graph 12. So boys are graphing 3x squared minus 7. And the girls are graphing negative 1 half x minus 3 squared minus 2. Graph it exactly the way you it is written.
And my girls have 11. Get some points. Okay, Taylor, what's your vertex here? Zero, Zero what? Seven. Are you sure? Seven. Negative seven. Negative seven, okay. And what other points do you have on there? Um, negative one, negative two. Um, negative one. And? Negative two, negative five. Negative five? Positive five. Positive five. Okay, so then this is going to be one and negative four and two and positive five. Feel good there? Yes. Okay, boys, do y'all have y'alls? Can we write the points down? Okay, what is your vertex? Negative seven. No. Negative four. Negative four. Three and negative two. Three and negative two. Okay, do you have other nice points on there, Jake? Um, how far do you want to go? Um, I'm pretty Here's sure one, these are fractions, right? There's one here. There's Shouldn't be. Where is two? What is your say for two? Negative five over two. Okay, so that's negative five over two. All right, we're fixed to two point five. And at one, you're at what? Negative four. Negative four. Okay, okay, so that means at four, you're at negative five over two. And at five, you're at negative four. Yes? Mm -hmm. So you got your calculator? Jacob, did you not get that or you did get that? Oh, I did. Okay. I actually looked at the Sebastian, wrong one. did you get that or not get that? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So I'm going to hop up here and we're going to graph this one and see what happens. So I'm at zero, negative seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Down here. Then I have negative one and negative four. Four. And I'm going to jump across to positive one and negative four. And then I have two and. Five, one, two, three, four, five, and negative two and five up here. All right, how does this graph, let's talk about the differences between this and the parent. It did what? What are a couple of things that it did? It went down. It went down. What else did it do? What do y'all notice about that in comparison to the parent function? It's, skin, it's tighter, that's a good way to write, or it's skinnier, right? Okay, so if you have a number out front, this is a shrink stretch, okay? So if this number is greater than one, technically it is called a vertical stretch. I know that seems backwards, but it is. Which makes your graph skinny. Everybody okay with that? I'll explain why in just a second. If you have a number less than one, <clears throat> so a fraction, you have a vertical shrink, which makes your graph get fat. That's what's going to do. All right, let me explain why that seems backwards. So if you put your arms up like this and make a U with your arms, like you're the parent function, right? It's vertical. Which axis is vertical? The y. The y axis, which is up and down, right? So if you were trying to touch the y axis, you would stretch up your arms really tight and try to touch that axis, right? So that's why it's a vertical stretch. You're stretching out, making yourself taller. You're trying to get closer to that y axis. Does that make sense? So as that number in front of x squared increases, that graph gets skinnier and skinnier and skinnier. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, so if that's what happens, then, okay, so if I come over to you and I act like I'm going to hit you, what do you do? You back up, right? You shrink away, yes? Okay, so here's my um, parent function, right? If I put a fraction out front, it's shrinking <coughs> away from that vertical axis. So in essence, it gets fatter, wider. Is everybody okay with that? Because sometimes they ask you about its appearance. So the appearance is if it's more than one, it gets skinny. If it's less than one, it gets fat, right? But you also have to understand that the skinny is a stretch and the fat is a shrink. Is everybody okay with that? And it's vertical because we're talking about the vertical axis, the y axis. Is everybody okay with that? We good there? Okay, so that's why that happens like that. Okay. So in this one, the number out front caused it to be a V. I'm going to put V for vertical. Are y'all okay? But you have to write shrink or stretch because they both start with S. Everybody okay with that? 
So it's a vertical stretch by three because it's the number that's out front. Does that make sense to y'all? Yeah. All right. The other thing that happened here was what? What did y'all tell me? It went down, so I call that a vertical what? What's a slide? It's a what? Translation. So it's a VT down. How far down did it go? Seven. So you don't write negative seven, you just write seven because the down covers the signs. Everybody okay with that? Just like your arrows cover the positive or the negative, which direction it's moving. Everybody good there? Okay. So if I graph this one on the boys' hat, I go to three and negative two. And then that other one, the numbers aren't nice, but I can go to one and negative four. And I can go to five and negative four. So it skips on it. Okay. So this one, and it's a little bit difficult to see because you don't have a ton of the graph here. But it's doing what? Reflection. Yeah, it reflected. It got fatter. It also did what? Moved. It moved which direction? Down, yeah. Down and what else? Over three. To, to the right, yes. I mean, it did lots of stuff, right? Okay, so when we read these, the easiest way to read the transformation, yes, you can graph it, but you have to understand what you have to describe, okay? The first thing you look at is a negative sign because we're going to read it from left to right. Isn't that how we read left to right? Okay, so we look from the front of the equation to the back, left to right. The first thing you have is the negative sign. The negative sign causes your graph to what? Reflect. So it's an x-axis reflect. Is everybody okay with that? That's the first thing you would write down. The next thing in the equation is what? What's the next thing after the negative sign? What's directly behind the negative sign? One half. The one half. What did the one half cause my graph to do? Right. Yeah, it grew. It's technically it's a stretch, right? Yeah. So it's a vertical. Oh, sorry, a shrink. It's a vertical shrink because it's less than one by a half. If you think about the number, that makes sense. It's a shrink because that number went down, right? It went. Down. There's, no, it, there's nothing in front of x. It's one, right? If this is less than one, it shrinks. Yes? If it's more than one, it stretches. Okay? Then the other thing I'm looking at is this minus three behind my x. What does that cause my graph to do? Mm -hmm. Left, right, up, down. What does it do? What does inside the parentheses do? Which way? Is X up and down or left and right? It's right. It's left and right. Guys, you always on a graph do left and right before you do up and down. So what a direction, Kaylee? Right. Okay, which I'm going to, how do I label that? Horizontal. Horizontal translation to the right three. If you don't know what that arrow means, then you write the word right. Everybody okay with that? All right. Then the last thing back here, the square, because it's quadratic. What does this right here do? Cause the graph to do what? Well, how do I write that? Vertical. Vertical translation down. How far, Zoe? Negative two. By two. I don't have to write the negative because the arrow takes care of my negative. Is everybody okay there? Mm -hmm. All right, those are the different types of translations. So here's the gist. H is a horizontal shift. That's what's inside the parentheses, right? If we have something inside the parentheses, we set it equal to zero and solve, which means if it's if it's a plus sign in there, it's actually going to move to the left because the sign changes, right? If it's negative minus some number in there, it's actually going to end up moving to the right. Is everybody okay with that? K is a vertical shift. If it's positive, this one gets to keep the sign because it's not inside a parentheses. So if it's positive, it's moving up and if it's negative it's going down. down if that if out front i have a negative sign it is a it is reflected and it reflects where across what x-axis everybody okay with that all right so now i'm looking at if i have a number out front a if it's more than one it is a vertical what stretch 
And if it is less than one, it is a vertical shrink. Is everybody okay with that? Like you absolutely have to understand how this works. Okay. All right. So here now, okay. All my equations are going to start with y equals because we're assuming we're in y equals so we can graph them. Okay. How would I write a translation two units to the right? Is that H or is it K? Where do the where does that stuff get written? In the parentheses. So I have X, and if it's to the right, I'm going to end up writing what sign? Minus. Minus two, and then I've got to square it. You absolutely have to have the square there because that tells you it's quadratic. Is everybody okay with that? Yeah. Okay, this one, still Y equals. This time, it only goes up five. What does up have to do with? K. The K value. How do I write that? Mm -hmm. X squared. Go ahead, Carla. Plus five. If it only translates up, there's no B because the B, this is what moves it left and right. Yes, everybody okay with that? All right, here. It's translated left and down. So what is that? What am I going to have? Left three. How do I write that? X plus three. X plus three, and then I put my square on the outside, and four down. How do I write that? Minus four. Minus four. Good. Okay, here. It says I'm translated right and up. If it goes right and up, I've got to have a parenthesis, right? Okay, right. How am I going to do that? X, X minus seven. 7, and then I'm going to square it and up 4. What do I do? Plus 4 at the back. Everybody okay with that? Okay, this one. Still Y equals. It's reflected over the X axis. How do I write that? This negative sign causes the reflection, all right? And it goes down three. Does it move left and right? So do I need a parentheses? All right, so X squared and then what? Minus three, good, okay. This one says reflected onto the X axis. What do I write then? A negative sign translated five units to the right. What do I do with that? X minus five, good Zoe, and then square it, and then it says two units down. So now what? Minus two. Are we okay? All right, this one. This says vertically compressed. That's the same thing as a shrink. All right, if I compress something, I shrink it, okay? All right, so it's vertically compressed or shrunk by a factor of one-third. Where does that go? In the front. In the front, okay? So I got this one-third out here, and then it says eight units up. What do I do for that? Plus eight. Plus eight. So what am I missing here? Where, what do I write for that? X squared, because there is no movement left and right. Is everybody okay with that? If it doesn't move left and right, left and right you just write X squared. Okay, this one. Mm. Vertically stretched by factor two. What do I do with that? Where does the stretch go? In the front. Okay, so I've got my two. Then it says reflected across the X axis. So what do I do with that? Yeah, so I'm going to put my negative sign in there. Everybody okay with that? All right, then it says <coughs> translated four units to the left. So how do I write that? Squared. Don't forget your squared. Everybody okay with that? All right. All right, um, I'll bring you your assignment, and y'all can start working on that. The graphs you can get from your calculator, okay? We passed two over here in the past two days. All right, the graphs.